Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Sam Healy, what's up, y'all? Now normally I don't join Sam on his Games Workshop reviews. <laughs> He could not resist. But you know, it isn't just the not resisting. This is one of those games that every time we talk about games, someone almost always chimes in and goes, what about Blood Bowl? Yeah. What about... It's just one of those games, It's it's been out for a really long time. It's a grill the, game. The third edition came out in, I think, 95? That's like 20 years ago. Yep. Um, and that was the third edition. It essentially has this ridiculous backstory of in the Warhammer universe, they're fighting and suddenly they find an ancient stadium. <laughs> okay, <laughs> And they just say, hey... Let's follow the rules. They, they, they kind of guess at the rules of American football and make up their own game. Yeah. And they do this, and there's, again, this really long backstory. Just, they just wanted to make a game where you could tackle each other and it's kill a, each other yeah, while it, getting the ball. It's a sports game set in the Warhammer Fantasy or Warhammer 40K universe. Now, what's interesting is this game has, does not exist in a vacuum, no. Had we reviewed this back in 1995, there would probably be, this would be the only game of its type. But since then, especially in the last five years, yeah. there are many, many games that have the same whole, let's have a football-style game where you can punch your opponents. Slaughter Ball, Chaos Ball, uh, what are some of the other ones? Well, there's a lot. Yeah, there's, there's they've, they've, just in the last two years, really, there's been a proliferation of them. So, um this is coming back into a crowded market, but it does have its name with it. So, well, Sam, let's go. How does check, it play? Let's go check it out. So, in the game of Blood Bowl, the basic idea that you're trying to accomplish here is you're trying to get the ball down into your end zone. And score a touchdown. Uh, it's very similar to American football. However, it uh, doesn't have any downs or anything or stoppages of play or anything like that. You you basically are are fighting over the ball for uh, eight turns from both coaches respectively for the first half and the second half. And whoever has the most touchdowns at the end of the second half is the winner. So generally speaking, on your turn, each one each coach's turn can he can move every single model if he wants to and if he doesn't cause any turnovers or anything like that he can move up to all of his models um, on his turn and then once his turn is done the other coach has the same opportunity to move all of his pieces uh, or up to all of his pieces basically and it goes back and forth each coach is going to be given eight turns per half. If you look down here on the dugout, um, the times are you have eight turns and eight turns. Well, coach takes his one turn, then the other coach takes his one turn. And so I've taken my turn, now the other person takes his turn. Then I come back and it takes my turn, I go like this, and so forth and so on, until the half is over. At the end of the half, uh, everything resets. Any people that are in the reserves box can come back onto the field, and uh, if there are any guys that were knocked out, they have to roll to see if they come back. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, at the end of 32 turns, uh, 16 from each coach, whoever has the most touchdowns wins. So one of the things that you can do in your turn is block an opposing player. Uh, so straight up, if the black orc blocker is trying to block this uh, human lineman, uh, he has to s uh, compare the strength of the two of the two players. So with a four here and a three here, uh, the orc is a stronger blocker. So he is going to be able to roll two dice. And I'm just going to use the human dice here so that we can see. He's going to be able to use two dice and choose which one he wants to use. Now, if the human, for some reason, were stronger than the orc who is initiating the block, then he would be able to choose which of the two dice. As long as one uh, player is stronger than the other, two dice are used. Now, in the case of, let's say, the black orc blocker blocking a catcher well the catcher's strength is two which means that the black orc blocker is double the catcher's strength in that case he would actually roll three dice and be able to choose which one so in this situation back to the lineman uh being blocked by the uh black orc blocker 
he gets to roll the dice and choose which one happens. So, for example, uh, these two, this one means that the attacker is actually put down. Well, the orc definitely doesn't want that to happen, so he's going to choose this one, which means that the defender stumbled. Okay, so when a defender stumbles, he is pushed back to one of the adjacent squares that is behind him. Uh, he chooses. So let's say that he goes this way, and then he is knocked down. If the person had the dodge skill, he would not be knocked down, but he would be pushed back. But since the lineman doesn't have the dodge skill, he is knocked back. The person initiating the block can then take the ground that this person previously occupied. And now, since the person is knocked down, uh, a chance to injure that person, which is exactly what the orcs really want to do, happens. And so we have to look at the armor value of the person that was blocked and is knocked down, and we're trying to roll over that number. Well, a number a roll of seven is not higher than eight, so no injury was scored. Had an injury been scored, however, we would go over here to the dugout and roll again if we rolled an eight or nine, it would be a knockout, which means that the person would actually come off the pitch and be placed in that dugout. At the beginning of the next drive or at the beginning of the next half, they would be able to roll a die and see if they can come back into the game. A 10 through 12 though, they are dead uh, or just so injured that they will not be able to come back into the rest of the game. So that is what blocking does. Another action that the model can be given is movement, which basically simply means that we take the uh, movement ability of the person in question here, in this case the lineman, and he can move that many spaces on the board, either diagonally or orthogonally. So we could go one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, and that is a movement situation. Now, anytime during that move, for example, if the there was a ball right here, uh, the person could go one, two, three, attempt to pick up the ball, and then continue moving if you wanted to do that. Uh, a person can attempt to pass the ball at the end of a movement phase. Now, if you attempt to pass on your turn, you're basically going to be uh, passing the ball from one person to another person down the field. And how far away they are is determ determines how difficult or easy it is to... Uh, uh, complete that pass. So the passing template is used here. The circle down here at the bottom is placed over the head of the person making the pass and then the rest is determined by what length of pass it is at. So here, if he's passing to this lineman right here, it would be considered a quick pass, which actually would give you a plus one to the agility roll to see if you can successfully uh, complete the pass or not. Out here at length two, you're making a short pass, which is basically a straight up die roll, no plus or negative modifiers. But then if you try to make a th long pass to this catcher out here, uh, that's going to incur a negative one uh, to your agility roll. And then if you're trying a long bomb, then it's negative two to your agility roll. Now, in lieu of passing the ball, it is possible for you to hand the ball off. This is one of those advanced rules. And uh, you can be adjacent to a person and you can hand the ball off to them uh, that which is a, a free action. You don't have to make an agility roll to do that, but the person receiving the ball still has to make an agility roll to make sure that they uh, do uh, receive the ball well. In this case, they rolled a six. Definitely, sixes are always passes. Uh, ones are always fails, even with modifiers. Now we're going to go back to movement because I forgot to go over the tackle zones that each player has that is standing up. If a player is knocked down, they have no tackle zone, you don't need to worry about this. But if they are standing up and they are not knocked down or stunned or anything like that, they have a tackle zone. And that means that the eight squares that are around that model are considered the person's attacking zone. Each time that a player leaves a uh, area that is in one or more tackle, tackle zones, they have to dodge because this person is going to be trying to trip him up, especially because he has the ball, and he's trying to do everything to make him not move forward. So this move would be okay, but if he tries to move out of that tackle zone like this or into another one like that, whenever he leaves this area, he's going to have to make an agility roll to see if he 
s jumps over or m this guy misses basically so, um, so that's a definite pass anyway so he would be able to continue moving through his movement allowance but if he were to fail, he would move to the space he was trying to go to, but then the ball would fumble, uh, which means that it would scatter. Um, we would get the uh, eight-sided die out and roll that guy. It would go actually here in that two direction. If someone is blocked in such a way where they are forced to leave the pitch for one reason or another, the crowd gets them and beats them up and so they have to immediately roll on the injury table to see uh, what kind of injury happens to them. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind if you have people using the uh, sidelines a lot. If somebody gets a good block on you, you could be losing that player for the game or at least for the next uh, half. Uh, so be careful with that. There are also There is also a uh, throw in template for if the ball leaves the pitch the crowd is more than happy to uh, Make sure that it comes back in you just set it here uh, Wherever the, the the ball left you would roll a six-sided die and it comes in three So the ball would be placed here uh, if it comes back in like that So there is that throw in template uh, generally speaking like we said before uh, You're trying to get as many touchdowns as you possibly can and you're using all of these different things that I've talked about in order to accomplish that end all right, so it's a very simple, uh, very basic kind of game, but it is a lot of fun. Let's get to our final thoughts. So there you have it. That is how you basically play Blood Bowl. Now, I, I didn't go over all of the intricacies that Blood Bowl has with it. There's a lot of advanced rules that I didn't include in the explanation because they're just not necessary to understand how the game plays. Um, they're advanced although the level of advancement that you need to understand how to play these games on the very upswing is not that high let's say you could play any kind of these uh, games that we talk about elder char and all these uh, different amara yeah. thrash games if you can play those you could play every single advance rule in this game yep. and not have a problem in fact you could even start by learning those exactly my first thoughts on on this game and 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 i just to clarify i've never played any of the old blood bowl games neither have i okay but my first thoughts coming into this is as soon as I played it, I'm thinking, oh, wow, I want to see what else there is. Yeah. It feels like this is a nice starter set, but you, to play the full game, you're going to want the extra models, the ogres, and mm -hmm. even maybe a couple other. I mean, I saw the dwarf team. I know you really want that team. Yes. Um, They're not out yet, but yeah. Right. Well, so when these other teams come out, it's like, oh, okay. Once those expansions come and you have teams and mm -hmm. leagues and special players, like, for example, all the players in this game are fairly generic. Yes. But if I had a player on my team who is Jack Van Fuloba, you know, and he <laughs> is really good at something, right. that player means something to me and yeah. I can get more involved in the Absolutely. game. And I think whatever my <clears throat> thoughts are on this one, they will improve a lot with more stuff. Yeah. And that's how Games Workshop always operates. Yes. The game does come with four of those kinds of characters uh, uh, that you can use the generic models that come in the box as those characters. You just have to somehow denote that that's who they are but uh, you can do that or you can go seek out the models that uh, are available I don't know if they're exactly available yet but they will be I believe but the idea here is that it's begging expansions it's begging this they already have two expansions in the pipe for it uh, they've got the Skaven that are coming out first that's gonna be expansion one it's my team and then expansion two is gonna be the dwarves that's his team. Um, and once those two come out then you're gonna have a lot more of uh, uh, I guess you could say customization ability there that's oh, wait maybe the that, that is my team. that's possible so um, as as a starter set, which is basically what this is, you get the humans and the orcs uh, in order to play Blood Bowl. It, uh, I think it, it does what it's supposed to do. It gives you an entry level to the game, and then they're going to start coming out with expansions for it. If you want to continue doing that expansion ability, then go ahead and go for it. But if you don't, you can pick and choose what armies you're going to, your, your, uh, or what teams, rather, sorry, uh, you're going to use as you play Blood Bowl. All right, let me do the QVC thing here. But Sam, what if I don't like putting models together? <laughs> well, thanks for asking, Tom. Uh, this is actually a, uh, the simplest, easiest box of miniatures that I've ever put together so from even Game I could do it? Yes, even you can do it. Um, if, you re if you think back to the, uh, uh, the uh, Games Workshop game, the Scouts in the Jungle 
can't remember the name of it now. Oh. Scouts in the Jungle. No. Rain on the Hills. You guys are probably going to pepper the comments with the name of it. I can't remember the name of it right Happiness now. Happiness anyway. in the Mountains. <laughs> no. These models are the easy to put together ones. Each model only has three pieces to it, which is a far cry from the 10 to 11 or 12 pieces that a regular Space Marine has. Uh, so these guys go together very easily. It took me, the you, you get 24 models in here, and it took me about an hour and a half to two hours to put all of them together, um, which is not a lot at all. And that's with clipping them off the sprues, uh, cleaning them up and all of that kind of stuff, getting the flash off of them. So they're very, very simple to put together. Not a whole lot of glue was used, just a couple dollops here and there, and it goes right together. Uh, so, but it's still there. I mean, if that is bothersome to you, that still exists. It is, but this is definitely on the light end of having to put plastic miniatures together. So if that is something that you're not really good at, I would still think about giving this a try because... This is very, very, very simple. Foundational, basic, putting miniatures together. And I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of being able to paint miniatures at all. Um, and I thought that the miniatures were really easy to tell apart, even unpainted. Yes. And I do like that they're blue and green. That's yeah. helpful too. But even the different models, I knew which of his guys were the throwers. Yeah. I knew which ones were the big nasty ones. It was right. easy to go, oh, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. That's who each person is. Exactly. And I, I really like that. Um, and the rest of the components of the game... I was really impressed with those. The board is cool looking. The cards were big and it's a double easy sided board stats. too. Yeah. Um, the football throwing the base template. thing template yeah. that was cool. Yeah. Uh, the 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 spread just really nice components. I mean, this is doesn't look like a big box, but it feels like there's more game in this box than the box sizes. That's what I feel. Yes, there is. I mean, uh, and the thing that I like about it is that it, it while it is not a perfect uh, simulation of a sports game. And then, really, what sports game is it trying to emulate? Is it trying to emulate American I think football? Street football that we <laughs> played as kids. Basically, that's what it is. It's like an amalgamation between uh, American football, uh, soccer, or European football, and maybe rugby it's thrown in there somewhere. Uh, it's it's really kind <laughs> of a healthy dose of murder. <laughs> yes, exactly. So it's it is emulating a sports game, and I think it does it very well because we had a lot of different. Uh, situations that arose just from just basic dice rolling, random events, that type of stuff that really felt like, you know, you could see that happening. You know, this guy trips one guy and he fumbles the ball and it bounces a few times and goes into his, his teammate's hands and his teammate takes off for the goal line and somebody else hits him. And it's just a really interesting thing that just make, comes alive in your imagination as you're playing the game. I really enjoyed it a lot. The game is very simple. Uh, like Sam said, and there's a good chunk of luck involved, okay? You're rolling a lot Very of dice yeah. and seeing what happens. The rules are not complicated at all. And while Games Workshop is better than they have been in the past, they still can, when you open the book, you're like, oh! And it's, I, they, they, yeah. I, I, they almost need like a thing at the beginning, watch this video. That's all you need to do. Because yeah. it's really, I mean, this game can be explained in a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, the charts are, for the most part, Easy to understand, although it's still, to me, a little weird that if I have a two, I'm rolling a five plus. I, I know why yeah. they did that for yeah, yeah, yeah. math purposes. but What he's basically trying to say is that the rule book is very verbose. They could have said the rules in, in a much quicker, concise manner, but that kind of stays in with the, with the entire Games Workshop thing. They like to add a lot of flavor and a lot of flair to their rules. Well, I don't mind that, actually. Yeah. The flavor is all, is all well and good. In right. Fact, the, like the last 20 pages are about yes. how to paint your models. Yeah. Here's the whole history of the Blood Bowl League, which I read every single word of that. <laughs> I know more about Blood Bowl than you guys do. Yeah, he no, probably... No, maybe not true. No, know. that's definitely not true. But um, I, I, I enjoyed all of the different aspects of the game. I like the fact that they're coming out with new uh, army uh, teams, and they already have two of them planned, and I know that there's probably going to be more than that. Um, this is one of their... I guess you could say champion games. Uh, this is one that has really stayed popular over the years. And uh, the fact that it hasn't been available for a long time has a lot of people looking at this one already before it's even uh, available. So Right, and it's coming um, up very soon, actually, So yep. from us putting up the review. Now, I have not played Blood Bowl before. I have actually, there's of all these games, I don't play them very often for whatever reason. I've only played Chaos Ball, mm -hmm. which is a very different game. Chaos Ball is essentially a big fight and there's a ball involved. This one is <laughs> right. actually more about getting the ball to your opponent's line. You're still fighting each other for sure, yeah. 
but they get back up and keep fighting. I mean, you can kill people in it, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Yeah. Um, I liked it. I, I'll give it one football up. I, I. It's kind of like what I would play on a lark. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It was fun and interesting, but I don't know that I was like, oh, I want to play it again. Now, my rating might change. Mm -hmm. Playing campaign style, playing with new teams, playing with more specialty players. Mm -hmm. I really think my rating would go up. Okay. Um, base game, it's entertaining. It's fun. It's the slightest bit longer than I'd like it to be, but only just a bit. Yeah, the game length will, will tailor down a lot. I guess you could you... easily change it. Well, yeah, I guess once you know, but even when you know what you're doing. No, if you know what you're doing, it, it tailors down a lot. You don't have to second guess yourself. You don't have to wonder about what I'm going to do. And you get into certain situations, you know exactly what you need to do. I really want to customize so, my team. Yeah. I think that's what it is. I really want to do that. And that's not, it's somewhat possible here, but. Not really. Not not as much. Right. So once that ability comes in, I think that my rating will go up by a point or two. Right. I really, I think I'll be that much more excited about it. Now, the special play cards that actually come into this um, are at another level to it uh, because it's, it's not just about what your models are doing on the board uh, because now you have up to three different uh, possible just... Like I, I, I refer to them as kind of like interrupt cards. That's a throwback to the Decipher or Star Wars game. But uh, where you can interrupt somebody's turn or you can play this card before somebody's turn to uh, make a specific rule govern their turn. And then after their turn's over, it's lifted and now you can just act normally. There's a lot of di different kinds of things in there. And I, I really enjoyed that aspect of the game uh, because it's not just about strategy of moving my guys around and all this kind of stuff these random events the crowd can do something that's just off the cuff and and you weren't expecting so i really enjoyed the special play cards uh that were included in the game too really kind of mixed it Although up i wouldn't mind if they added another hundred of them yeah honestly. yeah i mean they, they're, there's there's only a few of them uh each deck so more of those would be really great um as far as my rating for the game i'm going to go ahead and give it two thumbs up for me i always heard about blood bowl i always you know, it was the, the legend that was whispered about uh, or yelled about. Um, and now that I've been able to play, I guess, the revised version or the updated version of it, I can see what people were so hyped about back in the day. Because it really is a fun game, and I, I love the fantasy setting that's in it. Um, uh, so I, I, they, they did well. They did really well uh, producing a revised version of a game that, that people really loved. I, I'm... I really think that people are going to be on board for this one. So there is that. We're looking forward to uh, when Sam builds and paints my new army. Or <clears throat> this. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to make him do it. He needs to do it on his own now. All right. Blood Bowl. See you guys later on. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.